tonight's message let me make myself clear let me make myself clear and this is not about the preacher this is about God this is about whom people God this is God's word to you let me make myself clear could you tell somebody next to you God is making himself clear Father in heaven, as we get into your word, we pray that you would take charge of this place. Show up. Show up. Fill this place with your presence. Take away the dross. Take away the humanness. Take away our filth, our sin. And transform this house, this place into your house. Only because you are present. It is a common place when we alone are here. But it becomes a sacred spot when you show up. As you told Moses, when you showed up at the burning bush, you can transform the spot of a bush into holy ground. When you show up, help us to realize that you are not here because we call your name. You are not here because we speak from the word of God. You are not here because we sing and praise. You are here only when you show up. We cannot bring you here. So we invite you, Lord. Come please and take charge of this moment in Jesus' name. Amen. Our gem text is taken from the book of Romans chapter 13. And don't let anything disturb you now. We are in the word of God. Romans 13 verse 11 and 12. And that, knowing the time, it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent. The night is long gone. The text actually says it is midday. The day is at hand. The full day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the clothing, the armor of light. At the beginning of this series, good evening, Junior Jackson. I'm meeting you for the first time. So, good evening. At the beginning of this series, I, I would have shown you from the Bible that the events in the world, they are clear indications that we are living in the last days. For some people, this phrase sounds like an overplayed anthem. We are living in the last days. Um, like an overused cliche. Since my mother was alive, my grandmother was alive, we heard that we are living in the last days. But if you compare Bible prophecy with world events, you must be convinced that we are standing at the borders of eternity. The Bible record shows clearly that whenever humanity would have arrived at a point where we behave as though we have no moral guidance. Whenever humanity arrive at a spot where human beings operate as we have no sense of morality, that is the time God interrupts. That is the time God shows up to let us know enough is enough. The Bible says, that in the days before the flood, Genesis chapter 6, 5 to 7 says, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented God. It hurt God at his heart that he made man on the earth, and it grieved him. 
The Lord said, I will put man to sleep. I will destroy man whom I have created. The one who created us has the right to take us out. Am I talking to somebody? The God who created us has the right to decide when he would have had enough. I will destroy man from whom I've, crea whom I've created from the face of the earth. And God called Noah and commissioned Noah to preach to the people a warning message and to help them to understand that doom was approaching. God told Noah, prepare an ark for all those who would be saved. The Bible also says again that before Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed, two angels of God said to Lot when they went to Lot's house in Genesis 19, 13 through 12 and 13 rather, do you have any other besides your son-in-law and your sons, your daughters? Bring them out of this place for we will destroy this place. Because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord. And the Lord had sent us to destroy it. Some time ago I was sharing with some folks that when you read the Bible, you would realize that God never sends destruction on people. God actually sends destruction on a place. He sent a flood on the earth. And those who would be saved got into the ark. And those who stayed out in the earth perished. He sent fire and brimstone on Sodom and Gomorrah. Look at the text. Bring them out of this place. Verse 13. For we will destroy this place. And the Lord sent us to destroy it. God's purpose is to cleanse the earth and prepare it for a people. But if we stay holding on to sin, we will be destroyed with it. Am I talking to somebody? God wants to destroy or God intends to, God will destroy sin. If you give him your sin, he will destroy it. But if you hold on to your sin, you would be destroyed with your sin. Am I talking in the hearing of somebody? The Lord said that the last days will be as it was in the days of Noah. And it was in the days of Lot. But when he said those things, he was not only describing how low and corrupt people would be as it was in the days of Noah so shall it be as it was in the days of Lot so shall it be God was not only saying or Jesus speaking on the authority of God God in the flesh he was not saying the world will be corrupt as in the days of Noah the world will be corrupt as in the days of Lot that's not all that is involved the nearer we come to the end and the more the world comes as it was in Noah's day and as it was in Lot's day, the louder God will speak. So Jesus is actually saying, when people become more and more evil, the louder God will speak to save. And Noah did preach. For 120 years and he preached with passion. Noah preached with so much passion that animals heard the call. When you can preach that a donkey will accept the gospel, you preached. Are you listening to me? When you would have preached that a lion will accept the gospel, you preached. Noah preached with so much passion that animals got converted. But there were some people that were more stubborn than animals. God wants the world to know that the clock of our probation is coming to midnight. It's just about midnight. 
And Revelation 14 and verse 6 and onwards talks about the details of the last message that God has for this world. And it is not for any specific group. It is not for any specific location. It is for everyone. And the message is so urgent and so important that it is seen as angels. Not humans, but angels. Carrying the message. And that's the kind of speed God expects his people to work with. Or oh, you got quiet. All of a sudden you got quiet. The Bible says, and I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven. Ain't no angel coming here to preach no gospel. No angel. It's the people of God seen as angels with rapid speed flying in the midst of heaven. Having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people saying with a loud voice, fear God. And give glory to him. For the hour of his judgment is come. And worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountain of waters. And there followed him another angel saying Babylon is fallen. Is fallen. That great city because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And a third angel followed. Saying with a loud voice, the nearer we come to the end is the louder God is going to speak. If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead and in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. The three angels' messages. They are God's last words to this planet. Are you listening to me? The three angels' messages make up God's last words to this planet. Each of these heavenly angels fly proclaiming a section of one complete message. Let me say that. Each angel is preaching one third of the last day message. It is interesting to realize, however, that during the last COVID pandemic, many voices were raising red flags and chanting that they believe the pandemic and they believe the vaccine was connected to the mark of the beast. Am I talking the truth? Yes. We hear people talking about the mark of the beast connected to COVID. People from all different Christian groups were warning people against taking the vaccine because it just might be the mark of the beast. But hold on. We will get to the mark of the beast later in this series. Now, I find it amazing that God sends three angels. One, fear God. Two, Babylon is fallen. Three, don't receive the mark of the beast. But everybody focus on the third angel. And talk about mark of the beast. Are, are you listening to me tonight? If you are going to make sense out of this message, you can't start with angel number three. You have to follow God and start with angel number one because the first message is the message to prepare us for the rest. Am I talking to somebody? So tonight we begin with the first because nobody starts counting from three. We look at verse, um, the first angel. And I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God! Give glory to him! For the hour of judgment is come! That's how we would speak. And worship him 
that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. That's how the angel would sound. The first angel brings the message and calls everyone on the earth to worship God because judgment has begun. Judgment has begun. And what is more interesting is that the angel does not say, fear God and worship him because the day of judgment has come. He says what people? The hour. Which suggests we are in the final hour. My Bible tells me there are eight texts that refers to the day of judgment. But here we find the angel talking about the hour of judgment. Are you in church tonight? Which tells me that we have a very short time. John described the angels as carrying out their mission with high speed and urgency. Time is running out. It is a message to everyone, to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. Because God is passionate about saving everyone. He says, fear God. Honor him. Respect him. Because you are under judgment. This message is not for any one group. This is for everybody. The man in the street is being judged. The man in the White House, judgment. The man who is robbing tonight, judgment. The drug pusher, judgment. The church people. We are in the hour of judgment. John says he saw the angel fly. John says the gospel is fear God. Look at this. The angel has the everlasting gospel. But the word in the message is fear God. Can I, can I pause here a minute? Many people, when they hear gospel, good news, gospel to them is about the love of God. God is love. That's good news. God will bless you. That is good news. He will, he will break every chain. Good news. Waymaker. Waymaker. Good news. Huh? He will provide all your needs. Good news. Well, let me tell you what is gospel. God is your judge. Many people, they love this lopsided message. When they look at Calvary, they see God so loved but they don't see God so hate sin. Calvary is not only about the love of God for us. It is about the hatred for, for sin. Jesus died because God loves us but hates sin. The everlasting gospel. Fear God. God is not your friend. God is not your plaything. God is not your partner. God is not a puppet. There are a lot of people who behave like God is a puppet. Just name it and claim it. Once you want it, you can get it. Just declare it and it has to come to pass. God is not your ATM. God is not your fast service machine. God is not a code that once you punch the right buttons, it will come. Fear God. It's nonsense people preaching. Making you feel once you want it bad enough and you have enough faith, you could, you could get it. So you stop praying. Thy will be done. You don't want to put that. You want to erase God from your prayer. And just pull down. Tear down. Claim. It's mine. Yeah. 
Yeah. Ten points to answered prayer. Once you put in those ten points, you get what you want. Am I talking to somebody now? Like if God is not in control. There's a one, there's a one foot gospel. It's a one foot gospel. Only God is good. God is good. God is good. That's why some people take the flag, the rainbow that God put up to say how much he loved people. And he wouldn't destroy the earth by flood. And they take it and they march in with it. God will love us anyhow. We can do what we want. We can do what we want. God is the judge of the universe. And the angel says, fear God. Yes. What they talk about is love. God is love. God is love. Oh yes, John 3.16. God so loved the world. Hello. God so loved the world. That's the only part they see. God so loved the world. That he gave Jesus to die for us. But they don't see the part that whosoever believes should not perish. John 3.16 has love. But it also have what? Perish. Yeah. People just talk about God. Let me tell you something. You know, God is so merciful. We come in church and we sing in, we pray in. Come, Lord, come. Fill my, fill my, God, all you, didn't, all you don't read about Isaiah. Huh? You don't read about Isaiah. Isaiah come in the temple and Isaiah, Isaiah saw the Lord. Huh? High and lifted up. And when he saw the Lord, he bawled out, Whoa, Lord, woe is me. And the Bible said, the, the, the angels cried holy. And the post of the house shook at the voice of the angel. God did not even speak. You were playing all kind of mambi pambi with God. Play with God. Play with God. Play with God. Play with God. God has his business, you you're, you're, you're interfering with God's business and you're, you're doing things. God, play with God. Play, he deal with you. He deal with you. We don't read about Balaam. We don't read about Ananias and Sapphira. We don't read some people like Judas playing with God's business. Yes, Russian roulette you're playing, you're going to end up hanging yourself. Hanging yourself. Fear God. God is holy. God is righteous. God is awesome. The angel reminds us God is the ultimate ruler. God is the sovereign leader. God is the ultimate arbiter. And it is to God whom we will answer. Fear God. Give glory to him. For the hour of judgment is come. Take this minute right now. Sit right there and internalize this. That right now, God is judging you. Internalize it. Imagine that. God is judging you. God is peeling back everything in your life. And God is about to make a verdict. Every minute, live like that. And just to make it clear. The angel makes a statement. I presented something on Sunday. I repeated it last night. Just to make myself clear. God leaves nothing unanswered. He leaves no question unanswered, no stone unturned. So if it didn't sit well with you on Sunday, when God explained the Sabbath truth, if it didn't sit well with you and you still struggle after last night, that Sunday did not come from the Bible. The last message to the world, God brings it in your face. Put up that slide. Revelation 14, 6 and 7. Verse 6 says, fear God. Look, fear God. Give glory to him. 
for the hour of his judgment is come. Yes. Worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountain of waters. The Sabbath command. For in six days, the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all them is. The angel is actually calling people back to true Sabbath worship. It's in the text. The first call that God sends to the earth is to tell people, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Because you are under judgment. This is not a coincidence. This is God calling us specifically to remember the true God and the true Sabbath. God is informing us that he will clarify everything before Jesus comes. If you're confused and you're still struggling with whether or not the Sabbath is to be kept, it is in the last message to the world. Hello? Last message to the world. He will not overlook disobedience and he will not leave us in ignorance. I love God, you know. Sweetheart, once you want to know, he will tell you. But you don't just want to know for knowing sake. You want to know for obedience sake. Huh? Come on. You want to know so you could walk in the way of the Lord. Because once you know and you don't go, You will end up knowing. The judgment scene. I beheld Daniel 7. I beheld the thrones. Were cast down. And the ancient of days did sit. You know when the court calls. And the judge comes in. All rise. Judge God. Has entered the room. His garment was white as snow. And his hair. Of his head like pure wool. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousands, thousands ministered unto him. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The judgment was set and the books were opened. God has a book on you. He has your book. He has a diary on you. And even though nobody else knows what's going on, he has it. God has got your files. Hello? God has your files. You could run. Can't hide. You could escape the eyes of man, but not God. One thing about sin is that when we get in sin, when we get away, we get bold. Once we're sinning and getting away, we tend to believe we'll always get away. So Judas had the money bag, and he was pinching pinching money and he kept getting away Jesus knew he was stealing and Jesus was trying to keep talking to him imagine he went to a feast in honor of Jesus and tried to pinch the offering when you start when you sin you, you end up sinning bold you know you end up sinning bold I was going to tell you I pastored a church years ago. But I wouldn't tell you we're online. But in that church that I can't tell you about, there was a brother who used to come to the church and he was having an affair with the lady, with a lady in church. Not only a sister from church, but he used to come and he and the lady doing the thing in church. When you begin to sin and you keep getting away, just get bold. Bold. So that we have, there was evidence. Things going on 
in church. Yeah. When you, when, we, we, I remember an evangelist had a big crusade some years ago back home. And the ushers collecting the money. And between here and the back room, fellas pinching. Between here. From here, they go into the room with the money. They, they bargain. When, it, when you start to sin and you keep going away, you get bold. But you're only playing Russian roulette. The judgment was said. God has your book with your files. Yes, when you're, when you're home and your wife's sleeping or your husband's sleeping and you're on the phone texting with your, with your significant other, God has your files. God has your files. When you're calling people and, you know, doing your little weaseling and all kind of stuff to get, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Election coming up and you're calling your friends to who we would put there and who we going to put there. God has your files. The judgment was set. And the books. Open. The beautiful thing about this is, the beautiful thing about this is, as nasty as your book could be, once you accept Jesus Christ as your living Savior, the book will be white as snow. When God makes his verdict, it's final. Are you with me? Yeah. No appeal court. Yeah. Are you listening to me? Yeah. There's no state court and, 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 and county court and you appeal to the state court and then you appeal to the supreme court. God is the supreme court. Yeah. And when God pronounces a verdict, it's no appeal. It's final. When God gave the verdict in Noah's day, it was final. When God passed verdict on Sodom and Gomorrah, it was final. When God pronounced judgment on Pharaoh, it was final. And when God pronounces judgment on this earth, it will be final. Fear God, give glory to him for the hour of his judgment not will come. Present tense. Present tense. Give due respect to Jehovah. When you come in his house, give him respect. You see, there, there's a lot of talk, Christian, going around. Talking God, talk. Talking God, talk. But blatant disrespect for God. We respect everybody else. But God. And this preacher will say it until he leaves. Stop disrespecting God. God, you have more respect for your boss. You have more respect for your boss. You don't go to work so. You don't go to work so. But God could take anything. God has your files. And God knows deep in your heart, you're being rebellious. Deep in your heart, you want to make a statement. I don't care about them, but you will care about God. One day, he will hold you into account. I am a preacher. I am not for sale, and I'm not looking for friends. I am here to tell you, your judgment is sure. Sure, you don't go to work so disrespectful to Jehovah. Yes, but you make you're making a statement. I don't care. Take that. Ain't no 
nobody God needs. Better get that through your head. Ain't nobody God needs. You need God. You know how many elders feel if I ain't here, the church go fall? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah this church holding on because of me. Pastor. Because of me. Yeah. Yeah, well, I want to remind you. Is that a fella named Moses? He's dead. He's dead. The church still rolling on. Is that a fella named Joshua? Dead. Church still rolling on. Is that a fella named Isaiah? Dead. Jeremiah? Dead. David? Dead. Paul? Dead. Peter? Dead. Ellen White? Dead. But Jesus lives forevermore. And he says, I, I will build a church upon this rock. I will build my church. It's not your church. One day we will bury you too. Oh, I slip can't go on without me. Watch and see, watch and see, watch. Wait, time running. Time running. Boy, I, you know, I, I sit and I watch people. I say, oh, all, you, all you're brave, you know. All you're brave. All you feel is the pastor. All you feel is the church board. All you feel is the elder. It's God. Yeah. And you know, why God will, you know what God will judge you for? You don't go to work so. Just that. That's enough to judge you. That's enough to judge you. You're not going to work so. Talk to me. God don't only have your works in here. He has your motive in there. No one escapes the gavel of God. Nobody. Whether you're a church person or unchurch person, whether you're baptized or you're not baptized, 2 Corinthians 5.10, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that everyone must receive the things done in his body according that he had done whether it be good or bad payday someday you better repent and get your act together God does not need you and if God doesn't need you the church don't need you hello Church really don't need you. You have you you have a you. It's a privilege for you. Privilege. God gave you a privilege to serve in his in his church. A privilege. But your your your, your gift got into your head. It's a privilege. God could shut you down in one minute. Some of us think. God's message of judgment is only for the vagrant and the piper and the bandit. Church people behave like judgment is only for people outside. But the Bible says judgment begins. Yeah. Israel will be judged first. Sifting. Sifting. And some people behave like judgment is only for adults. Huh? Like God will only judge adults. Leave the children. God wouldn't deal with them. No, 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 no. Let me read a text for you. Look what the Bible says. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Move on, please. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God. Keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every into judgment. With every secret thing. Whether it be good. 
but that'd be evil. Yeah. When you stand before God, there's nowhere to hide. Nowhere to hide. God has, the, imagine, God has your thoughts on file. Okay. So you're sitting right there now, and you vex with me? Yeah. you real vex. <laughs> hmm? yeah. Pastor say, you don't go to church, so. You don't go to work, so. But you come into church, so. You're vex. You know what they bring you here for? Hmm? I know why you don't hurry up and go. I see, I know what you get. His heart thing, heart attack and dead. Boy, hello, hello. Hello. It's in the book. It's in the book. And hear what the Lord's saying. You just killed Pastor Manzano. For if you're hating your heart, you're a murderer. Every secret thing. Hide your secret from people, but you can't hide from God. Strict record. God will bring every work into judgment. The lies, the record. Schemey, the record. God says, thou shall not steal. I was preaching one time. You know, we have government workers back home. Every country have government workers. I tell them, God said, thou shall not steal. Stop stealing the government property. You go to work, work eight hours. You're stealing time. Yeah. Don't go on the people's job and your child has an a, a, a assignment to carry for school and you carry it on your work with your flash drive and print it. Carry it home for your child. You just steal. Oh, boy, look, look people in trouble here. You're stealing. Go and tell the boss, I would like to print something. I do have paper. Could I, you know? Well, yeah. Stop stealing. Stop going in the pantry inside of the antifin. You want something? Ask for it. Every work shall be brought into judgment. And those of you who have children, I'll tell you until I leave, and you get in the way of your children. Hear what God, God says, suffer the little children to come unto me. Let them come. You don't want them to come? Well, God said, listen, I'm not talking to you anymore. I talk to your child. Bring up that text. Rejoice, O young man, in thy youth. And let your heart cheer in the days of thy youth. Walk in the ways of your heart and in the sight of your eyes. But know this. For all these things, God will bring you into judgment. See, see, hear what God is saying. Hear what God is saying. Parent, lead your child to Christ. Stop this nonsense about they're not ready. You lead them. Tell them. Son, give your heart to the Lord. Daughter, give your heart to the Lord. Tell them, tell them, tell them. Don't say it's up to them. You tell them. You need to make a decision. You need to be serious. You're going to die one day. Leave them. Well, the Lord said, I pass by you. I'm talking to him. Young man, run. Play. I'll judge you. This message, put it back up, watch. Rejoice, oh, young man. So God said, listen, suffer the little children to come unto me. And he, no, no, you're, you're in the way. God said, well, I'll talk to them myself. Young fella, play yourself. Run about. You're young. You have time. I will judge you. God will judge the young people. All those young people in this church, God will judge them. And he's judging them now. See, this thing about fear God and give glory to him for the obvious judgment has come. Yes, the Lord is judging the world, but not them. What happened to you? What, what, what are you drinking? What are you drinking? Suffer the little children to come unto me, lead them. 
train up a child. Train means to lead. Point them. Let me tell you something, young people. Anytime young people reach an age where the conviction gone, you can't get them back, you know. You cannot get them back. Play your games, young people. So God said, adults, you prevent them, I judge you. And the young people, make up your mind. And if they don't make up their mind, I judge you also. Stop playing Russian roulette with God. The first angel says, fear God. Fear God. Respect God. Give glory to God. Anyone else that you give glory to would be your God. Anyone else that you listen to would be God. Fear God. To listen to anyone else when God speaks is to make them God. Worship him. And this call is not a call to a group. It's a call to you personally. This is the fundamental principle of salvation. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever. That is personal. So when God calls, you don't look to see who else is coming. When God calls, you don't wait for your friends. You don't go as a group. You know, Andrew went to Jesus before Peter. Yes, Andrew went and when Andrew got convicted that this is Christ, he went and called Peter. Andrew didn't wait for Peter. And then Philip got convicted and Philip went and found Nathaniel. See, you can't wait for the group. This is personal. Who so ever. That is you. I told you tonight I'll make a call. Sweetheart, the text says that the Sabbath is part of the last message. Fear God and give glory to him and worship him that made heaven and earth, the sea and the fountains of waters. God is saying it over and over again. The message tonight is let me make myself clear. God is saying to you, I'm, I'm judging you. And one day, it will be over. Be over. Would you stand to your feet? I want to call tonight, this prayer night. I want to ask my sister, my brother, came in here tonight. You need to make a decision for the Lord. And all we are asking you tonight is for you to say, Lord, Lord, save me in the judgment. Save me. Save me. I come to you. And I know my files are dirty. I know my record is filled with all kind of acts. But I want you to forgive me of my sins and save me in the judgment. If that is you, why don't you come and join me here. Let me pray with you. Leave where you are and come. Come, come and join me. Let's pray together. You want the Lord to save you in the judgment. Would you join me? Right here so we can pray. My sister, would you come? Come, let's pray. Come, let's pray. You know what God is saying to you. You know what he's saying to you. You don't want to stand in the judgment and you're on the wrong side. My brother, would you come? Come and join me here. Let's pray together and ask God to save you in the judgment. Would you come? Would you come? Would you come? Would you come? We pray tonight. Tonight is prayer night. Would you come? Would you come? And if you want to recommit to the Lord also, you want to recommit your heart to the Lord, come. 
Would you come? Praise the Lord. Someone else come. Come, sister. Come, sister. This is this is serious business. This is serious business. You are being judged by God, not by man. If you had to appear in the Supreme Court, your heart, your heart would be racing to stand before those judges. One day you are standing before God. And he says to you, make your calling and election sure. Oh, with our sins. Would you come? Tonight we're dedicating our lives to God. And we want to be we want to be declared, we want to be declared not guilty. Because Jesus died for us. Mm. Yes, my friend. Yes, my friend. Don't resist the spirit. Don't resist the spirit. Make your calling and election sure. Oh yes. Let the, let the church sing, how shall we stand? Come my sister, come my sister. Let's pray together. Come. Just commit your life to God tonight. Stop thinking about Things. Stop thinking about what is out there. Stop thinking about family. Stop thinking about friends. This is about you and Jesus. Just come, let's pray. Just come, let's pray. Come quickly, sweetheart. Come quickly. God is calling you. God is calling you. God is calling you. God is calling you. Would you come? Don't resist him. He is talking to you. He's talking to you. Would you lift your hands to heaven if you want God to, to just reach out to you and give you strength? Just lift your hands to heaven. Ask God, help me, Lord. Help me. Help me, Lord. Give me strength to do your will. Give me strength, Father, to do your will. When I stand in the judgment, I want you to declare me in Christ. Father God, your children are standing before you. They are praying. Their hearts are reaching out to you. They need you. There's so much we are struggling with. We are going to be judged one day. We are going to be judged. And when that verdict comes, no one can repeal. Help us, Lord, to walk in your way. Tonight we have heard the information. But information is not enough. We need to be transformed. We need to be obedient. We need to fear God and we need to glorify Him. And we need to worship Him. And any time we put someone or something before God, that becomes our God. And that thing, that person can't save us. Help us to turn to you tonight, we pray. Help us to turn to you. Help us to yield to you. Yield to you. You alone can save us. We pray and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. My brother, my sister, you do not know what tomorrow holds. Today is the day of salvation.